This is a video tutorial about how to use Cordis and Model Sim. To start off with, we're going to create a new project. We're going to select the directory that the new project will reside in. Give it some name. Empty project. Add the source files if you have any. and finish. We don't need to select a chip or anything of that type. Once this new project is created, we will notice that the top level is example.2. If we look at the file view, we do not have an example.2 file. This one, the design file, is what we want to set as the top level entity. So right click and say set as top level entity. Not the test bed. If we go back to the hierarchy, we now can see that the design file is the top level entity. At this point in time, we can compile it. While this is compiling, I want to switch over and look at the test bed. The test bed that I provided had a mistake in it. These were set to initial conditions of zero on the outputs. That was creating a conflict on the uh, wire driver. So the symbol and the known symbol should not be initialized to anything. They'll start off as an unknown condi condition and then they will be set by your logic. So make sure that you remove those zeros all updated on T-square. You can see in the file structure that Cordis created some database files and some output files. If we go back and check, it is done with analysis and synthesis. It's filtering, assembling, then it's running the time quest timing analyzer and the EDA netlist writer. We don't need these because we are not actually going to put it into a chip at this point in time, but it's easy to do that. Once this is done, go to tools, run simulation. Either one of these should get you to the right spot. It doesn't matter. These are going to start up model sim. If one doesn't work, try the other one. The objective is just to get it into model sim. A lot of students have had a problem with model sim giving an error that the Cyclone 5 IO buff is not available. If you get that error, come to the library, find Homework 1 Part D, and just delete it. Remove it from this compile project. That compiled version has some linkages to that specific part. Now we're going to re-add it. We're going to go to compile and navigate to the location where it's at. I'm going to compile homework 1 part D. We can see that it compiled homework 1 part D with zero errors and zero warnings. You don't have to use Cordis to use model sim. You can actually Google videos on how to set up a model sim project and just use this compile feature directly. I'm also going to compile the TB, the testbed, for the QPSK decoder. We can see that it also has zero errors and zero warnings. At this point in time, I'm done with this compiler. And now I'm going to go and start a simulation. We're going to look in the work directory. And I'm going to simulate the testbed, because it has the vectors that are going to drive the logic. When you do that, it brings up the simulation view. This is our device under test. This is actually the module that you created. But I want to include the in phase, the quadrature, the symbol, and the known symbol into the waveform viewer. And at this point in time, we're ready to simulate. So we can type run down on this command line and run the simulation. The outputs are shown here. It stopped at the end of the simulation. We can zoom in with this full arrow glass, uh, full magnifying glass, I'm sorry. And we can see that from our outputs, the symbol and the known symbol match. And so as long as you filled in the known symbol correctly, this is correct. If we go back and change this symbol value to have this initial condition, which I did accidentally, 
save that, we can go back to Model Sim. We can go to the Library view. Select both of these or select one of them. This is the only one I changed, so we don't have to recompile both. But you can recompile a batch of them at the same time if you want to. Recompile. You can see that it did Homework 1, Part D, and it did the test bed. Each had zero warnings, zero errors. We can restart that simulation by typing Restart on the line and then run it again. Now you can see that it gets these red errors. If we switch back and remove the initial conditions on the outputs, save it. This is Notepad++. This is the editor that I like to use. We can go back to Model Sim and again recompile these, restart the simulation, run the simulation. Now we get the correct outputs. I hope this helps.